Today we're going to do a titration is the lab, uh, virtual lab again. Uh, you don't have to wear goggles or anything really because it can't be dangerous really across the screen. Okay, so make sure your monitor doesn't fall on top of you or your laptop doesn't fall on your face. So anyways, um, if you had me last year at some point, um, we did this with Gatorade, all right? But today we're doing like an actual titration. Um, so the first thing that's going to happen, we're going to standardize um, our sodium hydroxide solution. So we're going to find its concentration very specifically. And we do that with a thing called KHP, all right? So I'm gonna write this on the board. Um, but know that KHP is not potassium hydrogen phosphorus. It's potassium hydrogen phthalate, all right? And it has this formula, KHC8H4O4, um, all right? Um, it is in your lab packets. Um, it's kind of right down here. There's a picture of it even, but it's right there. So know that KHP, that P is not phosphorus, all right? So what we know about KHP, it, it has one ionizable hydrogen. Um, we can easily weigh it on a scale. When you look at the procedure, you can see that. So we can get um, its mass very specifically. And um, because um, we know that one, I'm not sure what the percentage is, but if we look at percent composition, we know a certain percentage of it is that hydrogen that's ionizable. Essentially what ends up happening is um, our sodium hydroxides have one hydroxide. So we have this net ionic equation where we have H plus from my KHP plus hydroxide yields water. All right? As soon as all of my KHP is used up, an additional amount of OH, which we're going to show you in just a second, ends up over here because there's no more H plus to react with it. So as soon as we are adding more hydroxide, it shows up on the product side, okay? And it's gonna react with something called phenolphthalein. So anyways, we use KHP because this is in a one-to-one -one stoichiometric relationship. So if we know the moles of KHP we had, we can easily calculate the moles of NaOH that we used because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And if we know the volume of NaOH we used, if we know um, moles of NaOH and volume of NaOH, we can get concentration or molarity of NaOH very easily. So once we've standardized our NaOH, then we can try to identify an unknown acid. So we do that by then using the NaOH that we now know the concentration of and kind of working backwards. And um, we don't know what the, our acid is going to be the next time. It's an unknown acid, um, but we can get um, the equivalent mass. If it has 1H, then it's going to be the mass we work out because of this one-to-one -one relationship. Um, if it's an acid that's diprotic, okay, so protic means proton, two protons or two H's, then we basically, so we aren't gonna do that in this lab, but there's other experiments we could run to find out how many H's um, a specific acid has. So whether it's monoprotic, diprotic, or triprotic, and if we know it's diprotic, then we would multiply our equivalent mass by two to get its molar mass, okay? So equivalent mass is basically um, the mass of our compound per moles of H plus ion, okay? So instead of um, grams per mole, which is molar mass, equivalent mass is grams per moles of H plus, all right? So here's basically how a titration works. Um, in our burette, we have some sodium hydroxide. It doesn't have to be sodium hydroxide. We could have the hydroxide down here, um, but most titrations are like this because we're caring about the acid, not the base. So what we're going to do, the first step, is we have to add phenolphthalein. Okay, so it's an acid-base indicator. We've got, got to put some of it down here. So kind of bear with me. Um, I'm going to drop some sodium hydroxide from my burette into my flask. All right? And essentially what's going to happen here is um, this is going to break apart. It's actually already broken apart because it's broken apart. It's, it's soluble. And this is broken apart. And what's going to end up happening is my H's are going to form some water. All right? And so I've got some water down here, and I'm just, just going to have some NAs and CLs floating around, all right? So NAs and CLs. Um, I'm going to drop another sodium hydroxide into my flask, all right? And notice, I mean, if you look at kind of what I'm doing, um, I only had two H's down here, or HCLs down here, hydrochloric acids. So I've neutralized all of my acid at this point, okay? So I have no more H plus in my flask. Theoretically. So my next drop of sodium hydroxide is going to have nothing to react with. So I'm going to have basically this extra OH. That OH is going to cause my phenolphthalein to turn pink. All right? 
So that is the end point of our titration. And I know it's, I know all of my H is gone because there's no H to react with my OH. So the phenylphthalein ends up reacting with my OH. All right, and we see a color change. So at that point, I would stop my titration. What I've done to begin with, I've measured my volume to begin with. And as soon as I hit pink, I measure my volume to end with. So if I subtract those two values, I know my volume of NaOH used. And again, because I know my H plus precisely, my moles of H plus, because um, I weighed out my KHP, um, I can find my moles of H plus. It reacts on one-to-one -one ratio with hydroxide. So I can find my moles of hydroxide. Moles of hydroxide divided by volume is my concentration of hydroxide. All right, so titrations basically go something like this. Uh, this is a burette. Um, this guy right down here, it's called the stopcock. If it is um, parallel with the glass, it's open. If it's perpendicular, it's closed. So it doesn't like, it's not righty tighty lefty loosey. You can go either way with it. Um, hopefully we'll use these second semester and you're back in. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna put some NaOH in here. Because sodium hydroxide is going in my burette. Um, because you have no idea it was in this burette the last time it was used. Uh, we're just gonna rinse it out. Um, just to kind of go sideways with it and make sure that liquid covers all the walls of the, the glass inside. And then we're going to uh, pour it out. Right. Then we're going to fill it again. And actually what I did is I filled it past the little zero line at the top. All right. And what I'm going to end up doing, I can't really show you this, but this tip has air in it right now. So I'm going to open the stopcock and let the air get pushed out by the liquid so that this is full of NaOH as well. So I'm going to come back to the sink. And then just make sure that my top line is below my zero mark. All right, so you should see something kind of like that. And then you would, um, and this is data I'm giving you, you would then um, mark your initial volume of sodium hydroxide, all right, which the data already has for you. Um, with burettes, it's very interesting. Um, again, if you use these last year, I think you used them in my class at least once. But we have zero at the top. And as you go to the bottom, you get close to 50, all right? So you actually write that number down. So I would say, like right now I have, which this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but probably uh, 0.19 milliliters, all right? So it's a really small number. And what's going to end up happening is as we empty it, our number's going to get bigger. We're going to take final minus initial or big minus small to find out how much we actually um, let into um, my Erwin Meyer flask, which will be at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to take you over here real quickly. Um, I, um, here is my KHP. So again, it's not potassium, hydrogen, phosphorus, but it's phthalate. And um, I forget what the lab calls for. I think it's between like 0.2 and 0.4 or something like that. So anyways, I have stuff weighed out. So I'm just going to grab it. You usually have some kind of squirt bottle. So I'm going to pour my solid into my flask. But because it's a solid, um, it kind of it adheres a little bit just um, due to intermolecular forces and just attractions. So I'm going to actually use the squirt bottle and just squirt all that solid off the plastic into my Erlenmeyer flask, just to ensure that all that mass of KHP ends up in the flask. All right. And then over here, um, I have NaOH in this container, and over here I have just some distilled water. So I'm going to add water. It doesn't matter how much I add. I just want to add enough so that my KHP dissolves. All right, so I'm going to swirl it around for a little bit just to make sure that it dissolves. And unfortunately, KHP is one of those things that it can take a little while to dissolve. So I'm going to pause the video probably right here and wait for this to dissolve, and I'll be right back. All right, so I am back, and um, so Erlenmeyer flasks are shaped like this so that you can swirl it, and hopefully the liquid doesn't come up the sides. If we were using a beaker, um, you have a tendency to, if you're swirling, um, because it's um, vertical, you, your water spills out or your solution spills out, whatever happens to be in the uh, mixing um, container. So Erlenmeyer flasks were designed so that you could swirl them, and it looks like most of my KHP is dissolved, all right? So the next step, and this is probably the most important area in titration, is you have to, have to, have to add indicator. So I have some phenolphthalein here. Uh, it is the stuff that's actually going to make this turn pink. 
in the presence of hydroxide ions. So I'm just going to drop a couple drops of this in here. And we don't need much. That's good. And um, I'm going to start titrating. All right. So move this out of the way. I'll probably zoom this in a little bit. So uh, the other thing that's usually helpful for titration is uh, to put some color underneath so you can actually see the color change well. Um, another technique is to lower the burette so the tip is actually within your flask, all right? So that if you're not paying attention, someone's not paying attention, we're making sure that everything that's coming out of our burette is actually making it into the flask, all right? So I'm going to empty this, or start emptying it. And as you can see, there's pink forming right where my solution is falling, right where the sodium hydroxide is, is falling. And as I swirl that, okay, and kind of distribute that OH ions everywhere, they react with the H from my KHP, and the pink goes away, all right? So again, if I add some more in, and let it just sit, you can kind of see pink persisting. And as I cut it off, cut it off again, as that disperses my sodium hydroxide, it reacts with the KHP, not the uh, phenolphthalein, all right? So as you are adding sodium hydroxide, and here's where it gets tricky because I've got two hands and I'm trying to do a couple things, so I'm going to swirl with my right and add with my left. As that pink color, color persists longer, you want to add less and less sodium hydroxide at a time. So it's kind of persisting a little bit longer. So I'm going to add less and less and less and less. It's nice if you can kind of get just like a steady drip rate. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of like drip, drip. And we just want to get it when it turns pink, all right? Because when it turns pink, it means all of my hydrogen ions from my acid, in this case KHP, are neutralized. And that next drop of sodium hydroxide has extra hydroxide that can't be neutralized, and it reacts with the phenolphthalein and turns it pink. So, actually, not persisting that much. So I'm going to add a little bit faster. All right, so now we're persisting. So I'm going to get this to just like a drop at a time. And notice, we're going to see if that persists for about 30 seconds. If it does, I am done. And we just want that faint pink. You can probably add one more drop. So that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Yeah, yeah, and that's pretty much where we want to stop it, okay? So that's how you know a titration is done or you've reached the end point is because it turns pink, it stays pink, and essentially we just want a light pink. Um, so that is, um, so our next part um, really is you're going to take a measurement of the volume now. So we knew what the volume was to begin with. We know what the volume is to end with. In this case, it was about, I don't know, 17.48. So I subtract those numbers. That's my volume. And um, I use my mass of KHP to turn it into moles to get moles of KHP. Moles of acid equal moles of base because it's a one-to-one -one ratio because KHP has one hydrogen. Um, if you overshoot it, this is kind of fun, uh, it turns quite pink. All right, so we'll zoom back in. And if you go cotton candy pink, that is way, 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 way too far past the end point. All right? And um, it can just get pinker and pinker and pinker. Uh, but at a certain point, it doesn't get any more pink. Um, but that is titration. So essentially, um, on your lab, we're doing two trials um, in order to um, determine um, the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in my stock solution. Okay, And then once you have the sodium hydroxide stock solution, now you're going to get, um, you're going to do two more trials with an unknown acid. So the first two times we use KHP, 
Um, your next two trials, you're gonna use an unknown acid, um, which I know what it is, you don't know what it is, um, to get an equivalent mass. Okay, so not a molar mass, but an equivalent mass. Molar mass, again, is grams per mole. An equivalent mass is grams per moles of hydrogen. Okay, knowing that hydrogen reacts in a one-to-one -one ratio with the sodium hydroxide in our burette. So, in this lab, we're standardizing. Okay, and all standardizing means is determining what our NaOH solution is. And then we're titrating to hopefully um, determine the identity of an unknown acid. So, four calculations, four titrations. Um, you have all the data for the titrations in the spreadsheet. And I'm just made, made, mostly just answering the questions. You have some pre-lab questions as well. Um, I think maybe on page two or three. Um, so make sure you um, answer those as well. Um, include that in your scan whenever you upload it.